Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, in case you haven't heard already, you might like to know that it was just last week on August the 19th, that's when the U.S. House of Representatives published a report regarding the accumulated evidence that demonstrates President Biden's alleged involvement in acts of treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. According to the report, the Committee on Oversight and Accountability, as well as the Committee on the Judiciary and the Committee on Ways and Means, they've been conducting an inquiry to assess whether sufficient evidence exists that President Joseph R. Biden Jr. engaged in impeachable conduct. And with this as the focus, I want to take a few minutes to consider the results of this investigation. It's actually in the first paragraph of the 291-page report where we find the following statement, and I quote it here. First and foremost, overwhelming evidence demonstrates that President Biden participated in a conspiracy to monetize his office of public trust to enrich his family. Among other aspects of this conspiracy, the Biden family and their business associates received tens of millions of dollars from foreign interests by leading those interests to believe that such payments would, would provide them access to and influence with President Biden. That's right, there is overwhelming evidence that demonstrates President Biden was using his political position for the purpose of personal gain through illegal and unconstitutional means. The report from the House of Representatives presents us with a long list of shady business deals that involve his son, Hunter Biden. And after presenting a long list of the ways that then Vice President Biden abused his authority, the authors of this report provides us with this statement of fact. And I quote, President Biden's participation in this conspiracy to enrich his family constitutes impeachable conduct. By monetizing the vice presidency for his family's benefits, he abused his office of public trust, placing the welfare of his family ahead of the welfare of the United States. He also put foreign interests ahead of the interests of the American people. Indeed, precedent set by House Democrats in 2019 in their impeachment of President Donald J. Trump establishes that abuse of office, defined as the exercise of official power to obtain an improper personal benefit while ignoring or injuring the national interest, is an impeachable offense. And so based on the precedent set by the Democrats, Joe Biden ought to be uh, brought up on impeachment charges. Sadly, uh, I'm just talking about the first two pages of this 291-page report regarding the corruption that's been discovered during this investigation of President Biden. And after summarizing Biden's mishandling of classified documents, as well as the obstruction into the investigation of, it, of his son's uh, tax evasion, uh, well, the report, which was just published by the House, it, it presents us with this statement of fact, and I quote, the totality of the corrupt conduct uncovered by the committee is egregious. President Joe Biden conspired to commit influence peddling and grift. In doing so, he abused his office and by repeatedly lying about his abuse of office, he has defrauded the United States to enrich his family. Not one of these transactions would have occurred but for Joe Biden's official position in the United States government. This pattern of conduct ensured his family, who provided no legitimate services, lived a lavish lifestyle. The evidence uncovered in the committee's impeachment inquiry reflects a family selling the Biden brand around the world with President Biden, the big guy, swooping in to seal the deal on speaker phones or in private dinners. It shows a concerted effort to conceal President Biden's involvement in the family's influence peddling scheme. That's right. Within this 291-page report, uh, we find the receipts for all of these accusations that are being presented, which include the records of criminal conversations and signed contracts, as well as corporate letters. And after presenting all of this proof that Biden has abused his office by engaging in a conspiracy to peddle influence, the same report went on to present the evidence that helps us to see how the Biden-Harris administration went on to obstruct Congress and this, this criminal investigation of Hunter Biden. Here's how the authors of this official report explain 
explain it. And I quote here, the Biden Justice Department impeded, delayed, and obstructed the criminal investigation into Hunter Biden by permitting the statute of limitations to lapse on several serious charges against him, withholding evidence from disinterested line investigators, prohibiting line investigators from inquiring about President Biden and sharing information with Hunter Biden's attorneys. Now, in light of these facts, the investigators weighed in on Biden's obstruction of justice by declaring this, and I quote them again, This is not justice. This is obstruction and corruption, and it deserves a constitutional remedy. Now, as we consider the conclusion of this extensive report, we find the following statement, and I quote, Joe Biden has exhibited conduct and taken actions that the founders sought to guard against in drafting the impeachment provisions in the Constitution, abuse of power, foreign entanglements, corruption, and obstruction of investigations into these matters. The committee's investigative work has revealed that the Biden family, with the full knowledge and cooperation of President Biden, has engaged in a global influence peddling racket from which they made millions of dollars. The Biden family's influence peddling was vast and involved entities and individuals from some of America's greatest adversaries, such as China and Russia. Clearly aware of the political risks associated with Joe Biden's participation in this scheme, the Biden family and their business associates sought to conceal his involvement by funneling money through an extensive network of shell or third parties companies using code names and engaging in other obfuscatory tactics designed to maintain, as James Biden described, plausible deniability. That's right. Good old Scranton Joe, who grew up in a working class Irish Catholic family, has now uh, an estimated net worth of $10, $10 million, you know, after spending his entire life uh, in politics. You know, he, he spent his entire adult life in politics uh, and, and now is worth $10 million. Now think about that for a moment. This so-called public servant who has been in politics for the past 54 years ended up, you know, coming out of a, a middle-class family to become a multi-millionaire all along the way. And it's sad to say that this is actually par for the course when it comes to American politics, as many, many politicians become the puppets for those who use their wealth to control our political system. As for the corruption of the Biden-Harris administration, the report, which was just published by the U.S. House of Representatives, it provides us with nearly 300, 300 pages of proof that the Biden family has enriched themselves by abusing the political power of his position. Here's how they conclude this report, and I quote, To date, the testimony and documents received by the committees show President Biden knew about, participated in, and benefited from his family's influence peddling conspiracy. While President Biden, to date, has avoided accountability for his corruption, the committees are dedicated to ensuring that political influence is not for sale and that those entrusted to hold office are committed only to promoting the country's interests, not their own. As both president and vice president, Joe Biden has abused his office of public trust, putting his family's financial interests above the interests of the American people. Although the committee's fact finding is ongoing amid President Biden's obstruction, the evidence uncovered in the impeachment inquiry to date already amounts to impeachable conduct. The committees present this information to the House of Representatives for its evaluation and consideration of appropriate next steps. Well, I guess we'll wait to find out if the House of Representatives will actually pursue impeachment according to the evidence uncovered so far. Meanwhile, President Biden continues to enjoy one vac vacation after another uh, as the U.S. citizens pay for pay for his you know vacations and for example it was just this past sunday when joe biden and his family returned to delaware after a week long vacation in santa barbara california uh, and and after returning he then immediately boarded air force 1 which is in route to his rehoboth beach house in delaware which he purchased for nearly 3 million dollars listen i have no doubt that our taxes will continue to pay for Biden's vacations until the conclusion of his highly contested term. 
Meanwhile, the rest of us, well, we're stuck with the results of Bidenomics, which Kamala has assured us is working. It's working all right. Gasoline is up by 46.6%. Natural gas is up by 28.1%. Used autos are up by 26.4%. Beef is up by 20.1%. Bacon is up by 15.4%. Eggs are up by 11.6%. Electricity is up by 6.5%. And that's right, Bidenomics is working. It's working. It's destroying the middle class. It's driving the impoverished to become slaves of this government system, which will then enable Kamila to advance the socialist agenda here in our country. And with all this being the case, I encourage every Christian to pray for political reform here in our country. Uh, we need to be praying so that criminals on both sides of the, of, of the political aisle might be exposed and punished for their abuse of power. Because without debate, this is happening on both sides of the aisle. We ought to be praying for them to be exposed and punished. And at the same time, I also encourage every Christian to remember that we're not only citizens here of our nation, but we're actually ambassadors for yet another kingdom in which there is no political corruption. I like the way that Paul explains this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's there where he declares, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Listen, those who trust in Jesus Christ are not only saved from the punishment that we deserve, but we've also become ambassadors of our heavenly home. And as ambassadors of heaven, we ought to be spending our time encouraging unbelievers to trust in Jesus Christ so that they might also become citizens of Christ's everlasting kingdom in which there is no corruption. With this as the goal, let's encourage every unbeliever to submit themselves to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. And as we do, the Lord Jesus will help us to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.